crazy. All right, so what we need to do is take our design, both of them, move command, move it to the bottom of this object, the bottom of our stem. It's, if it's not in the center, it's okay. This is where you want to do the moving. And before you do the moving, make sure you have your ortho on. That way it doesn't go into some weird z-axis. So you select them, you move them again, like so, until you get it to the position you want. Oh, looks like I should have made a smaller design a little bit bigger. I can I'll just I can scale it right here. Not a big deal. So it fits in. There we go. I actually scaled the other one too. There we go. And then once you have that positioned in, in the correct spot, all you need to do is move it down. The, actually, the bigger one, bigger one down. So you get something like that. And I'm gonna do a quick loft. You guys don't have to, so you guys get a feel of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something like this. And looks like mine's not connected. That's okay. I'll move it up and I'll join it. But that's what I'm looking for. And what we're going to do is use the shell command that we did before, or we can use a copy, put it back, delete it so we get an empty spot inside, or you can just do a circle, extrude it up, and remove it so you can put a light bulb in there. You just want some empty space for the light bulb. So you do that, you do a loft, you move the object up so it's actually connected to the stem, like so. And then you can use shell. But before you use shell, make sure you save your work because good chance it'll crash. So you go solid, shell, select surface, thickness, 0.25. Yeah, it didn't work. Not surprised it did. So I'll go back to that. I'm just going to come back around with you guys. So next step we're going to do is cut out the hole for the light. It's going to go on your uh, face of the end and draw a circle. Mr. Command on it. About the, you know, it doesn't have to be a specified size. Oops. I think I drew it. No, it didn't work. So I'm gonna draw it again. Thought I had it, but I don't. It's easier to type in the uh, dimension. Oops. Okay. Make it bigger. Oh, come on. So 1.5. Whoa. That's where you get screwy. Point. No. That's right. Now I extrude it up. Not too much so it doesn't go out of the object. There we go. And I'm subtracting now. I go to home, subtract, select outside first, the big object. Then I take the inside object. Oops, subtract, enter. There we go. And I got a place to put my light. Alright, that's one. We got that part. What we have to do next is probably one of the hardest parts to this is draw the petals to the lamp. So to do that, what our best bet would be to draw on the back of your actual lamp piece, not the stem, and you will draw out a petal. So select from the center somewhere, draw a couple of points like so, and then we'll try to get close. If not, it's okay close it up. So I drew something like that. That is definitely not what I need. I need to make sure it's closed. So I close it up. There we go. And that's one design. And that's the only design I'm going to make because I'm going to just polar array that so I have the exact copies of it. And if you want you can design a couple of them, different ones. It's up to you. And if you really want you can make it, well this one's a little small so I'm going to go scale it up. 
from the endpoint over here, make it a little bigger. There we go. And you can also adjust it using the z-axis, making it a little curvy compared to the actual shape. That way, it actually gives you gives it an angle. Cool design. Okay. Uh, we have that. I'm gonna try to use shooting. Right, that's like that. Uh, let me pause this for a second. You have your design. Uh, what I want you guys to do next is use a new command. We're gonna do some surfacing. To do this, you go to Draw Modeling Surface, and we're gonna use Planner. Our first surface command. Again, it goes to draw, surface, planner, or you can go to surface tab, and there should be a planner over here. Planner surface. And notice there are similar tools loft and sweep, and extrude, and revolve, but these are surface extrudes, surface revolves, and surface sweeps. That is important to know because if you use these, you can see the demo going up. It will actually just do a surface. It will not make it a solid object. That's the key important. And then once you use this one, every time you every time you type in the extrude, it will do it in surface mode because that's the last one you were using. So you have to go back to home and use the regular extrude if you make it solid. You'll see that. It'll come out probably. And I'll be here to help you guys with that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the pla planner surface. Click on that. It's going to ask you the object. Either you can draw a square, which we, we don't want to do, but we want to select an object. So we type in O for object. And we select our object. And when you do that, you click enter, and it should become a surface. We'll make sure everybody has that. All right, so we have our surface, and what we want, want to do before we give it a thickness is we're gonna bend it a little bit, you know, give it a little some shape. But to do this, we have to establish a new kind of tool. We're gonna to use NURBS. NURBS actually, if you select the surface, they'll come up to the and you go to the surface tabs. You've got these options right here, NURBS. If you select that, and it creates create NURBS. Why is it good? Let me pause it for. Oh, they have to be on. Show. Enter. Okay, hold on. All right. So what we have here is you can't tell, but it actually has nerves. There's two of them now, so you, you can see that switching from one to the other. One is the surface, the planner. And one is the surface nerves. You want to select that surface nerves because we turned it on, we created them, and you want to show CV. CV uh, control vertic uh, vertices. Oh, it says right here Vert control vertices, and that allows you to adjust it based on these points. So if you're trying to move it up, you know you can see you know, see where it gets funky. You may have to change your view before you do that. I should not. Hold on, go back, undo. So I have, I have select the NURBS, uh, show CV. You can use your coordinates or something. And you can see that I'm moving it, it's getting in a different shape. And as, that's actually a copy of it. Uh, what we can do is turn off the other one by uh, changing it to a different layer, turning it off. You guys remember how to do that? I'm just going to leave it because I'm too lazy to do that. Alright, so I adjusted it in shape a little bit. I might do the other edge too, over here, in the back. Going down. And you can see that it is a cool, unique design now. Not a flat pancake. I don't think they actually pancakes are flat. 
All right, we got something like that. I'm gonna delete the bottom one. It's just annoying me. I don't think I'm gonna need it. All right, we have something like that. That's done. Uh, you can hide the nerves. That way, you don't get those points. No longer is adjustable. Or you can show them. Again. If you click on the object, and you can show it on. It turns them on, and you could hide them. There's another option is changing the nerves. And that's when you add additional lines and additional points where you can adjust it. But we're not going to get through that because that's even more difficult. So we're just going to do it with a simple four point, uh, four point control vertices. That's what they're supposed to call. Not nerves. Nerves are the lines. Here's the nerves. Uh, convert to nerves. Alright, so we have something, we bent it a little bit, and now what we're going to try to do is give it a thickness. Uh, to do that, you go to Home, go to your Thicken tool, select your object, enter, you give it a thickness, maybe 0.125, and it does a thickness. And it's, you can see it's a little bit curved. So this is a great way, actually, if you want to do a fin for a boat propeller design, and you got the basic surface and then you want to give it a thickness or you want to bend it around create a turbine so forth and once you have one of these you can do a polar array which is in your uh, modified toolbar there we go it's array we're going to change it to polar that okay. you should hopefully know how to do this but if you're not I'm going to go over it so where I went to I went to modify Array, four boxes, uh, go to polar button, you select your object, which is that, the actual solid, not the nerves, the surface nerves, it's the solid. Click enter, you gotta select the center point, which is the center or the center of your of your stem, or close to it. You can always move it. And you can decide how many you want. Uh, I'm gonna say at least nine. I'm gonna do a preview just to get a view of it. All right, maybe that's too many. I could do seven, and let's say I missed one. So I'm gonna do, you know, one disappeared. Once somebody broke one, I'm gonna do one, two, three, twenty-five, and see if that. I don't know if that didn't work. I think it's three hundred. Yeah, that crashed, I think. Oh, I guess I get too many. Try again. There we go. One fell out. That looks cool. I'm going to keep it. Got my flower with one missing. Uh, I should have kept it. And that's how you would make the petals. We're going to go with the leaves next, and then we're going to do a the ground our third option. But here, that's what we designed so far. So what we're going to do now is do a ground. Uh, to do the ground, I want you guys to go to the front or back view. And make sure you save your work just in case we're getting too far out. So we save it and then we're going to design the ground so we're going to actually make it wavy. So if you were looking at the ground through, if you had x-ray vision and you were looking through the pot into the ground, you would design your shape. I'm going to turn off my ortho. It could be bumpy. Something like that. That's perfect. Now I did up here so I can see it. I'm actually going to move it down. Uh, to do that, I'm going to select the object. M for move. I'm going to move it down. You can see that you know what it was before, and it's moving down. That's where my dirt's going to be, like that. That's how wavy it is. And I want I can adjust this a little bit more, but I believe it as it is. It's fine. But what I'm going to do next is extrude this line, going horizontally on the z-axis because the z switched, like so. I'm going to move it over, making sure my ortho is on so it's nice and even. And now you guys can see that 
that's enclosed. And that's my ground. And to get, you know, to remove everything else, there's actually a few options we can do. You can do the easy draw a circle, extrude, and subtract it. But we're going to try a different command. We're going to try to use the surface trim, which is in the draw modeling surface. Where is it? Okay, I missed it. Hold on, let's go to surface over here. Trim. There we go. So that should be in the modify command. Sorry, modify surface editing trim. Trim. So you got. It's gonna ask you select surface or region to trim. And then click enter a space and then it's like cutting curves. That's my cutting curve, the actual yeah. right. And then trim area. Why is it? Alright you guys, you know what? We got to hold on to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the trim to surface. To, but you have to trim it to another surface to make it work. To do this, we have to actually draw a surface. So we're going to go to our home. Uh, we're going to extract, extract edges, actually, is in modify. Solid edit, uh, 3D operations, extract edges. You're going to select the inside circle or something close to it. Click enter. You will get a circle. From inside and outside of two two uh, edges, and what we're going to do next is we're going to go to our surface, and we're going to do a surface extrude. It's, it's basically the same thing extrude with solid, except it makes a surface. The thing about this is, it's still called the same thing. It's still ext, but it adjusts itself to doing only surfaces once you select it. So if you select this now and we do a blue box and only select the inside circle which is the most important part we don't want the outside, we want the inside and we extrude it down or you can extrude it up but actually we need to go down because that's our plane is on the bottom so we extrude it down and if I view under it you can see that it's empty and it's selected a little circle too but that's okay and we're going to use that to trim our surface that we created to do that, we go to our trim command in our surface tab. We select the, the actual surface we created, enter or space. That's going to ask us to select curves to surface, or the cutting curves. That's what we're cutting it from. Yes, surface. And then we're rem clicking space or enter. And now it's going to ask us what area are we to trim. We're trimming this area. So it trims it down. And we are left with a cool, weird ground inside. And from there, let me delete that. You could give a thickness if you want, which probably is our best bet. So if you go to home, under slice, there's thicken. Select the object. Uh, 0.125 is fine. And it looks like it did it. Yep, it's a solid in there. So I actually have a solid piece in there too. And that's how you would do the ground for your. Oh, I gotta delete that. I don't need that anymore. Oh, jeez, I forgot. Why is. There we go. Deleted both of them again. My ground and so forth. If we now use like the nerves to like make little ups and downs. Yeah. So, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is add a light. So, I gotta go to my render tool. Create light. I'm gonna go with the spot. No, wait. A point light. Sorry, guys. I've been calling it wrong. We want to put a point light. Turn off the default lighting, and we're gonna revolve around to get inside this piece right here. And we're gonna to try to get the center of it. And name it if you want. Point light or flower light. And exit.
All right, that is my light. Hopefully it will work. Uh, what we want to do is when we render, I will put a glass material on this. That way it should light up everything else in my interview. I'm going to go to our materials browser. Uh, let me start adding some material. You guys, it's up to you guys what you want to do. I'm going to just pick whatever I can. Not too picky. There's, as long as there's contrast, I can make it work. Default. Glass. Where's my glass? Glass glazing. Do that. Maybe a yellow for that. Looking for a green color. Or a wood. The stem. And the leaves need some coloring. Stone, so exciting. Roofing, plastic, paint, paint. Miscellaneous. And our metallic green, that's fine. Okay, I think I got all of them. And I'm gonna go to my render tool. It's gonna render it for me. Everything turned a little bit yellow because my light was yellow. Of course, the top doesn't change colors, but my petals are not clear. So, if I had a better view of it, actually, I'm gonna go a better view like this. I'm gonna do the rendering again. This is a medium. So I'm going to do presentation next, just after I view it, see if it is what I wanted. See, now you can see the petals, because the light is shining up. That's all you can see from the light. Which is pretty cool, right? I thought, I thought it would be. If there's a surface, the light should reflect over the surface and bounce light. So if you make a box, it will give it more perception of a real room, because light bounces off walls. That's why you can see everything, usually. And that's why people usually paint walls a, dark, a bright color. Uh, so we have that, but I'm going to change the options. So I'm going to go to my render options. I'm going to set this to presentation. And I'm going to run it again. This is my final set to see how it would really work. look if I send it out to a client with my artis artistic design. That's the complex area so it does freeze up and taking forever to load up. Hopefully it doesn't crash. While that's doing that and crashing, I'm going to save this work. No, oh, it won't let me. That worked, I think. I know. Nope. Still, still probably running it. Yep. I'm missing those two. One of these days will finish. But that's why I don't want you guys to do presentation in the beginning because it may crash your computer. If my computer can handle it, it's hard to believe the Oakton computers will. Yeah, feel free you guys if you guys want to bring in your lab.